Review meetings. At best, it can be the mechanism for lifelong learning and school improvement. At worst, they're seen as increased paperwork with lots of after-school meetings. So how do you make the most of performance management? Denise Inwood, a former deputy head and now an education consultant, travels from school to school advocating the importance of good performance management. If the school wants to move forward, it needs to work with its people and its staff to actually achieve its goals. And performance management is the vehicle for doing that. Today, Denise is visiting Ash Manor School in Surrey. She'll be working with John Matthews, who's Head of Humanities. When I've got a review, um, I'm quite energised because it's a time to reflect on what's gone on the previous year, to think about success and also to look at the way I can improve professionally. She'll also be working with the Head of Science, Andy Morgan. I think performance management serves a very useful purpose in that it gives teachers a, a point where they can actually review and think about the, the year that they've had and therefore see how they can move forwards. Denise is keen for Andy and John to explore the performance management process in more depth. She starts by getting them to watch a role play of a review acted out by a teacher and an education consultant. She wants them to analyse and criticise and think about what not to do in the future. Can I come in? Yes, of course you can. Please take a seat. Oh, I'm really, really sorry I'm late. That's fine, no I've problem. I've come straight from my Year 8 lesson and um, I had to keep some students behind to talk to them. It's the only opportunity I get to talk to them. It's not very good that she's had to come straight from her lesson. She's clearly wound up. Just breathe. All right, thank you. Do you want to drink a water or something? No, no, I'm fine, thank you. OK, this is your time, so we just need to be calm. All right, I'm fine. Thank you. She's not fine. So I thought we'd begin by looking at um, the, the, the objectives from last year yeah. and the things that we I've know. I've got them. I've got my folder here. Oh. She seems really nervous there. She seems terrified. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Oh, OK. I came in such a rush, I've left my folder. I've got a copy of everything here. Thank okay. you. So while you get yourself calm and relaxed. Right. She hasn't done her preparation. She's not going to get the best out of it. A review there, is she? Is this what we talked about last time? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, that's lovely. Having seen it, I thought it was quite interesting how it did reflect reality in the staff room, where some people do take ownership and control and some people really do leave it to the last minute. Next, Denise has a career map activity that will get Andy and John thinking about their past achievements and future aspirations. It's very, very important that we've had an opportunity, or taken the opportunity to reflect on our previous year and to identify what we feel are the key strengths and the key development needs from our perspective. Because although our reviewer will have a sense of where we are, we're the person that's lived and breathed that, those experiences that year. What I'm going to ask you to do is to draw a timeline. And what I'd like you to do is to actually identify key landmark events that have happened through the year. So last year, I'm going to start off with results. I had a phone call in the summer holidays <laughs> for, um, saying, have you seen the results? And that was a, a jolt. Where mine were on the rise, they weren't, you know, they still weren't up. You said mainly doing it about reflection. Yeah. But can I put something on about <clears throat> how I can. feel now? Absolutely. In the review and planning process, you're going to be reflecting on the year and then you're going to be thinking about where you want to go next. And of course, where you want to go next is partly determined by where you've been. So I'm going to have to write a key on this. I like the, the, your yeah, I've got steps. Big question mark there. <laughs> but Ofsted for me, that's when I went. It, I lost my focus. If we're thinking in terms of performance <clears throat> management and professional development, because I came, because the fear took over with me. When you put Ofsted, did is is that when you? That's when my focus went all. That's my wibbly wobbly lines. Oh, for the Ofsted, also got me lying a bit peculiarly, because. It was a fear, but then I actually yeah. really enjoyed it. I actually focused on that. I didn't... I certainly wasn't wibbly-wobbly at that point. Right. I went wibbly-wobbly earlier on. This process is something that you can be, it can be ongoing all year. It's kind of like a running journal. 
And, and what you would ideally be doing with something like this is you'd be dropping in on it on a regular basis. Doing the timeline, it actually astounded me how many big events there have been. So I hate to think how many small events there have been which yeah. have actually had a big impact on me. And that's, a, that's a very empowering, isn't it, for a mm. teacher who perhaps thinks, you know, she or he has had a very difficult year. When they actually map that out and actually look at the... There's a huge amount that's been achieved in that year. It's time for Andy and John to watch the next episode of How Not To Do It. Would you like to start by saying some of the things that you think have gone well this year for you? It's good. It's quite a nice open question to get her talking about her year. Yeah. But has she thought about it in advance? Yeah, I feel so unprepared. Thank you. Right. So, so looking forward to next year then, we need to think about the objectives and we do have some things to, to work from. And of course we've got the backdrop of the national standards and you are eligible for threshold this year. So those are the things that we can, we can use to develop and, and look at the objectives for the forthcoming year. It's gone completely over her head, all yes. of that. Uh, what about doing something on starters? That's a really good idea, because um, starting activities is something that, that a lot of staff are working on this year. She's just plucked that out of the air. Yeah. Uh, what about years, concentrating on years eight and nine, um, looking at writing some explicit starters to use in year eight and nine science lessons? That's great. She's probably thinking about the lesson she's just come from. But he's, he's quite happy with that, because it fits into what the school's doing. Yes. And we're looking at him at writing some explicit starter material for those lessons. Yes. OK, so that's really good. I'll make a note of that. We can write that later. Did he just write her objective for her? I think he did. I think he did. I thought that they both got out of it, they, or they both felt they got out of it what they wanted. She was quite happy to let him run the meeting, and he was quite happy to run the meeting, and they've both gone away of it thinking, yes, that was great. We've both got what we need but I don't think they have. In the role play, the teacher plucked her objective out of the air. Denise thinks it's vital to think about them ahead of time, and that's just what she wants John and Andy to do in this next activity. So I thought it might be a, be a useful exercise for us to actually have a look at two objectives, neither of which are necessarily perfect, but we can have a discussion about what we like about them, what we don't like about them, and perhaps just explore how they could be improved. Well, I think the first objective, to increase the grades in science, I'd like to know where the numbers actually came from. Why did, why did they choose that, those particular numbers? Did they just pluck them out of the air? Where does this 65 come from? We've got to think that this is an objective that's being set for an individual member of staff, yeah. and in fact that's an objective for a, potentially for a department or a team of people. Performance, performance criteria, criteria is ridiculous, really. To, to achieve the above is stating the obvious. You know, they don't lay down any idea of how they're going to achieve this at all or how they're going to measure it. Um, it's... You know, it's far too vague, far too vague. In terms of the actions to identify those students underperforming in the Year 11 mocks, I think that's a... I mean, yes, you would do that. Yeah. I think you would definitely do that. How you decide whether they're underachieving or not is an interesting issue. And then to set up revision classes. So looking at those actions as well, it makes the objective unachievable because really, you know, you're asking an awful lot of revision classes and um, home contact to go from 57 to 65 percent. Absolutely. Um, it's going to have, you know, home are going to have an enormous impact if they're going to be able to boost those results that much. So, OK, let's have a look at this second objective then, to increase the use of ICT in Year 9 English lessons. It's much better than the first one because definitely one person could do it and therefore you can have a target or objective for one particular person. The time bonding is good in this one. But the fact that they've mentioned the autumn term, both there and there, I think is good. What about the actions? My only one this will quibble would be that they're saying they're going to put ICT into each of my lesson plans. And sometimes you need to make sure that it's putting things in where it's actually appropriate. Looking at the performance criteria has really helped me think about the impact of these targets and how we're going to measure that. Um, it's making it specific enough so at the review meeting we can revisit the performance criteria and see how things have changed Absolutely. that year.
Now for the final part of the role play and more performance management punditry from John and Andy. It's, it's a very doable target. It's, um, how do you think we might uh, measure that? How do you think it might look if you were... Um, I think some starters would need to be written into the schemes of work. Right. Um, and then lesson observations and obviously my lesson plans. It's very vague. She's making that up as she goes along, isn't she? Yeah. She's just thinking about it. And a, a time scale, do you think? Um, well, they, they need to be there within sort of six months, maybe a year, next academic year. I can imagine six months down the line, her producing a whole load of starters yeah. just before her meeting. OK, so now we're beginning to shape something quite, quite tight, aren't we? We've got this notion of, of years uh, eight and nine lesson starters. You've set yourself a time scale of between six months or so. The reviewer as well, he's taking control of the situation, which, you know, it's her review. She should be having greater involvement, I think. And we can measure it by seeing that the starters have been written into your lesson plans and that there's been some lesson observations around that. How does that feel for you? No, I'm happy with the objectives that have been set, but I've got to go and teach my year eight, so I can't be much longer. OK, well, that, that's fine. Not enough time for a proper conversation. No, that's really poor. I will write these, these out for you and send them to you. You can look at them and then we'll sign them off. And uh, maybe I can suggest that once you've read what I've sent to you, you can, we can arrange a short meeting just to make sure that everything is OK. Her objectives have been done to her. I must go. Thank you. Bye. Her lesson is just as important as her performance management. And how many times does she teach year nine in a yes. year? And how many yeah. times does she have a professional review in exactly. a year? The reviewee in the role play took no control over what evidence would support her objective. Denise wants to ensure John and Andy go into their reviews with a clear idea of what strong evidence really is. What I'd like to do is to spend a little bit of time with you discussing what might constitute effective evidence. How about looking at a lesson observation? I'd have thought a lesson observation would probably be something that you could use as evidence. It's, it's important that, that during the planning meeting, when classroom observation is being discussed and agreed, it focuses specifically on the objectives of that observation. And the regulations stipulate that um, it's a maximum of three hours right. observation per yeah. teacher, but that doesn't have to be three one-hour slots, so that can be broken up. Denise, yeah, I've just bought this. Um, as a new resource for my department, the Chainmail Hood in for teaching... Can I feel it? You oh. certainly can. <laughs> for teaching Year 7 uh, Medieval Britain. Um, is, Gosh, could, is it really possible to use that? that? I think this is fantastic. If one of your objectives is linked to resourcing and perhaps building, enabling pupils to build empathy, then obviously physical resources are going to enable students to engage more effectively by empathising pictures of children using this and perhaps comments from children about, you know, the use of, the, the, the use of this and involvement with this will constitute good evidence. So could you use video as well then? Video would be excellent for that, yes. What we need to be very clear about is that the evidence that is discussed and negotiated and agreed in the review meeting and the planning meeting is the evidence that's actually produced. It's the end of training for Andy and John and the review process has been thoroughly dissected. In the next programme, they'll be carrying out their reviews and watching them every step of the way will be Denise. Will she be pleased with what she sees?